Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to make a stop motion animation in Google Slides. Uh, first I'm going to apologize for that awful noise in the background. They are doing some re-roofing and, you know, work doesn't stop because there's weird noises coming from the ceiling. Uh, and also I am currently screencasting a Chromebook onto my computer so I apologize for any lag that might occur for that. So let's go ahead and get started. So you've had your students log into your Chromebook, uh, or into their Chromebook, I should say, excuse me, and you need them to go to Google Slides. To do that, click the launcher, this little magnifying glass. You can click All Apps, and then Google Slides. Having students access Google Slides through this route is actually a little more beneficial for the teacher than anything. Uh, it just saves time because then the kids are only focused on looking for their presentations. They don't have to sift through all of Google Drive. All right, let's go ahead and create a new slide. So I'm going to click this blank slide here. So I have this blank presentation created for me. Uh, it's just going to do a little bit of loading stuff here, make sure it's all set up. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to be given this screen. I'm just going to go ahead and exit off of the themes. I don't need themes. Uh, and I actually, I want to change this slide to a blank slide. To do that, I can double click. So just two fingers, press down, uh, and then apply layout. I'm going to select blank. The other way to create new blank slides, is if I click here, new slide with layout, I can click blank. And then also the hot key for creating new blank slides is control M. To do that, it creates a three. If you need to delete a slide, just make sure the slide is highlighted and you can press that backspace. So here's my recommendation, is do not have the kids create all how many um, slides they need right away. Uh, that might confuse them and it might create some issues, especially if they accidentally skip one. So instead have them create this slide by slide. This is very much like when we took the photos previously and then we uploaded them into Movie Maker and then processed it. We're just doing this all within the presentation. So I'm going to go ahead and title my presentation as Lego Stop Motion, because that's what I'll be working with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to insert a new photo. So to do that, uh, I'm going to click the Insert button up here, and I'm going to select Image. And then I have this selection here called Take Snapshot. And this is very important. I'm using the Lenovo N22, so my camera has that flip camera on it. So, you know, you can flip it around. Hello. Flip it this way. And we'll want to have it centered. Now, the Google Snapshot takes it as a 4x3 as opposed to a 16x9. That's very important to note. 16x9 uh, is a widescreen format, and widescreen formats have a tendency to squish everything, whereas 4x3 keeps it uh, more natural looking. So let's go ahead and get this started. So I'm going to take my first snapshot. It's going to be blank. So I've just taken the snapshot there. I click select, and it's going to upload. Now, you may have students accidentally take multiple snapshots, and they'll be like, hey, there's multiple photos here. I can use these. Awesome. Uh, that is, however, not the case. Uh, you can take multiple snapshots, but then you would choose the one you want. Um, so I, I looked into that already. So now that we have this ready, I can go ahead and I'll click my new slide. Even if it pulls stuff up like this, that's okay, because all I'm doing is going insert, image, and I'm going to add my character in here. So this is where having two kids working on the, uh, or multiple kids working on the stop motion is going to be a little beneficial because you can have one kid get ready, take the snapshot, let it process, uh, the other one can be moving it into place, uh, that kind of stuff. So that's just my recommendation, so I'll click take snapshot, select. All right, now I'm going to work through this, and you are going to see it super sped up. Um, so, yeah, just be ready for that. And then I'll show you how we will go in and process this to make it work.
All right, now that we have made our stop motion, let's go ahead and look at how we can turn this into the actual stop motion animation. It's actually a fairly easy process, and it's pretty cool to see how it works. So you can see uh, after that video, that was about probably 13 minutes of work there, uh, really sped up uh, just so you could see kind of the process of how it goes. And now let's go ahead and we're going to create that as a stop motion that you could then share with parents or other teachers or online. So I have all my files here. So as you just saw, um, they're in order. I've gone through and I've just proofed everything, made sure it's how I really wanted it to look. Um, and understanding that this was a very rushed idea with no particular goal in mind except for just how to demo this. So when ready to share, I go File. And I'm going to do publish to the web. Now this is a fairly cool trick that you can do. You can either have the link or the embed code. So you could actually embed this into, if you had a class website, a uh, great way just to kind of put this right on the class website. And I have it set to auto advanced slides every three seconds. I'm going to change that to every one second um, just because it's going to be easier. Uh, I'm going to make sure start to slideshow as soon as the player loads and restart the slide the slideshow after the last slide. And I'm going to go ahead and click publish. It's going to give me this dialog box. Are you sure you want to publish this section? So I click OK. And you can see I now have this link right here. So to select it, um, it's already selected. I just press Control C to copy. And I'm going to open up a new tab and I'll go Control V. So now we can see it's going to advance it every one second. That's pretty slow. But here's where the trick comes in. If I click up here in my URL and I look all the way in here, I need to find the selection where it says loop equals true and delay milliseconds equals 1000. So I'm going to change that. So the way programs work is they actually deal in milliseconds instead of full seconds. So if I wanted to change this to, say, uh, half a second, I would go ahead and let me pause this. Uh, I would change it to 500. So I found that delay true, and I can go change to 500. I'll reload the whole slide. And if I click play, we're going to see that it's moving a lot faster than before. So now maybe I go in and I want to change that. Maybe it's not every half a second. Again, so I've paused it. I'm over here, and I found my delay milliseconds equals. Uh, again, I'll just highlight that right here. It says delay milliseconds equals. And maybe I'll change that to every quarter of a second. So 250. I'm going to reload the whole page. And there we go. That looks a little more accurate. So if I were to grade this, this would be a very poor movie according to my standards. There's too much movement of the actual table um, or the actual like stage piece. So instead, what you'd want to make sure is that you have your kids taped down wherever they're working um, and have it properly marked out so they can go back to that spot every single time. Uh, let me show you how to make the embed code work. It's pretty cool. So again, you could click on the embed. You see you still have all of these. You can check your size. I'm going to have it start as soon, restart the slideshow, change that to every second. And instead of having to go in and like constantly change and update um, on the user's end, when you go to embed it, there's that exact same phrase there. True and loop equals true and delay milliseconds equals uh, 1000. You could then change that number right there to anything you'd want. Um, a little harder looking at two screens trying to figure this out. So you could change that however you wanted. So maybe I change it to... Um, I'm going to delete it here. Oops. Uh, so I would actually have to pull this out and then change it from what I'm seeing here. Uh, either way, that's not really an issue. You just want to make sure you change that delay milliseconds uh, into about 250. 
that looked pretty good, or you could play around with that specific number, or have the kids play around with that specific number and tell you. Uh, hopefully you have found this video informational. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Uh, or you can always email me at wvan at emmanuelstcharles.net. And as always, thanks for watching.